P-O-S-T. P-O-S-T. Post, the serials you like the most, brings you the Roy Rogers Show, starring the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. It's roundup time on the double R bar. So saddle your horse, cause we're gonna ride far. The double R bar ranch transcribes stories and songs of the real West with the Whippoorwills. The wisest trail scout of them all, Jonah Wilde, played by Forrest Lewis. The Queen of the West, Dale Evans. And in person, the King of the Cowboys, Roy Rogers. Well, howdy, folks. This is Roy Rogers. Well, buckaroos, it's almost the new year, and I know one resolution you can all make for 1952. To eat post cereals every single day. Get Mom to put them on the shelf. You know you can count on anything bearing the brand name Post. Well, sir, things are quiet in Paradise Valley. Everybody's in a holiday mood. But that doesn't mean trouble isn't brewing somewhere. An old guy like that drawing $700 out of the bank. No, you don't, Manson. Yeah, he's leaving. Let's follow him. Use your head, Manson. We don't need that money. If he delivers it to somebody in town, we can't do anything. But if he rides out into the country alone... Now look, we can't risk a holdup. We've got too much at stake. Yeah. He's getting on his horse. It means he's riding out of town. Ed, we're just about to make ourselves $700. <laughs> Stop it, Manson. Get Stop it. Money for Norris. Manson, you kill him. We don't want any killing against us. Well, that wasn't smart. We haven't left a trail all the way across the country. Yeah, we're not leaving a trail here either. Well, the old guy got a good look at us. Once he gives a description, the law will know we're in this territory. It'd be different if we needed the money. Yeah, put it with the other stuff. We'll use it to have a little fun. Next town is Mineral City. And there we cross the border. And the law can't touch us. Yeah, I hope we get there. We'd probably better rent a room in Mineral City, just in case it takes overnight to contact the man who's to fix us up with the gang on the other side. Well, let me see if I have a room. Oh, here's one on the second floor. How's that? Oh, fine. We'll take it. Will you sign the register, please? Sure. I'll sign it. Uh, you take the key. Yeah. Right up the stairs at the end of the lobby and then turn to your left. Thanks. You ready? Uh-huh. There you are. I hope we can get out of here this afternoon. We can. If we have any luck. Best thing is to clean up and go looking for the fella we're supposed to see. <laughs> Dale watches Manson and Norris as they go toward the stairs. The one, a huge, bear-like man. The other, small, mean, despite his efforts to make himself agreeable. The hotel is quiet for several hours. And at the end of that time, another visitor appears in the doorway. Dale, Miss Evans. An old man, bruised and bleeding as though he'd been beaten unmercifully, staggers toward her. Dale, call the sheriff. What is it, Bill? Uh, what on earth happened? Uh, I feel sick. Oh, Bill, you're more than sick. You're hurt bad. Uh, I ain't got the strength to get to the sheriff's office. Well, here, let me help you. Oh. Come on, sit down here in this chair. Oh, oh don't bother with how I'm feeling. Just call the sheriff. We're going out for a while, miss. We'll leave the key on the desk. All right. Come on, quit staring. Come on, Norris, come on. Bill Palmer, his blackened eyes swollen so much he can't see, does not recognize the two men, but he hears their voices. The voices sound familiar. Dale, those two men, I, I think I know them. By now, the owners of the voices, the two outlaws, are at the front door. They open it. As they step through, they start past two other men just entering. Howdy. Afternoon. Yeah, uh, say there, ain't you feathery Fred once in the United States Cavalry? No, I'm not. Never heard of the man. Come on, Norris. Yeah, don't get your pug nosed about it, stuck up. Feathery Fred was a darn nice feller, except for his one oddity. Not knowing how close they've come to real trouble, the outlaws continue on into the street, while Roy Rogers and Jonah Wilde enter the lobby. Roy! 
We need some help here. What kind of help, Dale? Uh, Feathery Fred was a private in the same cavalry troop as me for 38 years. Well, what's the matter with you, Bill? Uh, two, uh, two men tackled me on the trail. They, they didn't say a word, just jumped me and started hitting. I, I tried to fight back, but it wasn't no use. There was two of them. One wasn't so bad, but the big fella, uh, he was like a roaring bull. They, they got my payroll. Seven hundred dollars. Convolutions. Thought I glimpsed him walk through here a minute ago, but uh, I guess I mixed up. Been hit too much. Did you ever see him before, Bill? Uh, no. Uh, I seem to recall their names, though. Big fellow was Manson. And the other was Norris. Say, Roy, them fellas we met coming in. Not Feathery Fred, the other one. His name was Norris. Well, they got a room here, but they're not registered by those names. That doesn't mean much, Dale. Uh, take care of Bill. Joan and I will be right back. No sign of them on the street. No, must have got away awful fast. If they saw Bill, they had a reason for getting away fast. I guess we'd better get the sheriff and have him talk to Bill. He's sleeping now, Sheriff. Well, don't wake him if he's hurt as bad as Roy says. I don't think that he could tell you much more anyhow. He didn't get a good look at him. About all he knows is that one of them is big and rough and the other is small. It could have been that pair that you and Jonah met when you came in, Roy. Well, the big fella looked just like Feathery Fred, Sheriff. Well, I don't know how Feathery Fred looked. Well, he looked just about the same as any other human being. Except... I don't want to know. Oh, you don't, eh? Well, you ought to learn... Bill to... said the names were Manson and Norris, huh? That's right. Feathery Fred, my old buddy. Roy... Half the country's on the lookout for those two. They've been identified as head of a gang that specializes in handling stolen stocks and bonds. Law officers have been warned they're heading for the border to dispose of some loot. It's funny they'd pulled a hole up then. Not necessarily, Dale. They may have needed cash to tie them over until they can sell their bonds and stocks. I'll see if I can find Reeny Egan. He may be mixed up in this. Oh, he's mixed up in everything. Uh... Anybody want to guess why Feathery Fred never had to get a haircut? No. Egan has a reputation mm. for harboring fugitives and knowing how to smuggle them across the line. But if I can't get anything out of him, I'll have to head for the border. Sheriff, you hunt for Egan. We'll take Bullet and see if we can trail these two rattlers. You can't do it. If they get across the border, your authority wouldn't be worth much there. But our guns can talk anywhere. This ain't the first time I crossed the border, you know. You're sure about that, Jonah? Why, me and Feathery Fred must have crossed 30, 40 times in our day. <clears throat> Jay, did I ever tell you about Fred? Oh. I think you've mentioned him once or twice. Yeah, well, Fred was a good soldier, perfectly normal in all respects. Except he we'll had a way... We'll have to watch ourselves coming into town here, Roy. Well, there won't be any real danger yet. But, of course, there are a lot of known gunmen from our side of the border taking refuge here. Yes, yes. Well, one thing about Fred's peculiarity now, it took him a long time to dry out whenever he got wet. But he was warm, even on the coldest nights. Never had to use a sleeping bag, neither. I say never had I to use a sleeping bag. I hope the sheriff finds Rene Egan. It might go a long way towards running these rattlers down if he does. Ignoring me. Completely ignoring me. It might just happen that we'd get enough on Egan this trip to put him where he belongs, Roy. He's gotten away with plenty in his time. Now, I'll try just once more, and if you don't listen to He sure time. has, Dale. There was one sergeant, you know, that just couldn't stand Feathery Fred. He sneezed every time Fred come into the parade ground. But then, of course, this sergeant couldn't use a pillar for sleeping on, neither. This is the main he... street up ahead. No, oh, Dad. Hold it. Hey, that's Egan coming out of the building down the street. Let's go after him. No, wait right here. Get off your horses and stand beside him so he can't see you when he passes by. I'd much rather find out what he's doing up there than get my hands on him right now. This is far enough. Lean back against the building. Yeah, all right. You and Jonah wait. The door's open. I'll have a look at what's inside the cafe before we go in. Roy walks to the open door, takes a quick look into the cafe. It's dark inside. So dark that Roy can't make out the faces of the men who are there. But he does see enough to know there's quite a number of men gathered about one of their companions, listening silently as he speaks. Egan says as quick as he saw, Rogers, he headed back. Knowing Rogers had come here to get Norris and Manson, nothing else. We gotta protect them, too. 
He told me what Rogers looks like, so we won't make no mistake. We'll get the right man. The men continue to listen silently. Roy knows their killer is planning to do their job. He motions quietly for Dale, Jonah, and Bullet to come to his side. We've come to the right place. Egan told the men in there that they were to protect Manson and Norris. Then Manson and Norris have to be here. You know, I wish Feathery Fred was around to go through that door with us. I'll go alone. No, you won't, Roy. We're in this with you. Listen, from what was said, I don't believe Egan told them we're together. So you wait outside with Bullet. If I get into more trouble than I can handle, and only then you come in, Jonah, and bring Bullet with you. But, Roy... He... You and Bullet go after me for all you're worth. Make out like you're helping them. That's the only chance we'll have of coming out alive if trouble develops in there. You know, New Year's is just about here. Time to start thinking about resolutions. Well, here's a resolution that'll please everyone in the family, I'm sure. It's your resolution to get and try new crinkles. Crinkles, you know, is the wonderful new rice cereal that's sugar-coated. Yes, candy-kissed rice, it's twice as nice. For breakfast, you just add milk or cream and eat, because new crinkles are already sweet. Crispy, crisp, toasted rice in sugar and honey. Yes, sir, you never had nutrition so good. No wonder folks everywhere agree. You will have a circus eat of crinkles. Sugar-coated cereal crinkles. Candy kiss price, it's twice as nice. Yeah. Candy kiss price, it's twice as nice. So you will have, have a circus eating crinkles. Boo-boo. So, friends, how about resolving to get yourself some crinkles tomorrow? Crinkles are grand for snacks, too. Crinkles, post new rice cereal that's sugar coated. <laughs> The outlaws of a border town cafe have been warned that Roy Rogers is coming for two of their number, Doug Manson and Ed Norris, and Roy knows they've been warned. Instead of asking for help, he tells Dale, Jonah, and Bullet to stay behind while he goes into the cafe alone. If I'm in bad trouble, then come in. But don't let them think you're helping me. Act like you're on their side. I'll see you later. Roy steps through the open door of the cafe and into the dismal, badly lighted room. He seems to look straight ahead, yet his eyes are on every man present, watching to see that a hand doesn't drop to a holster. What's on your mind, stranger? Something you want in here? Roy halts at the sound of this voice. The men turn on him. They wait to see what he'll do. The battered, unshaven faces reflect a warning of the trouble that will come should Roy make one false move. I ask you a question. What do you want in here? I'm just looking around, sightseeing. Move to the left. Cover them from all sides. Sightseeing, eh? Look, we know who you are and what you want. And I'm telling you this, Rogers, you're not taking anybody out of here. Not anybody. Now take it easy. I'm not after any of you. We've heard about your fast draw, Rogers. But this time you're up against somebody who's faster than you are. Oh. I got his gun. He's harmless. But don't kill him here. There may be people on the other side who know where he's gone. Roy steps to the side, keeps his back to the wall. The leader, the man who defied Roy, comes in close. Roy's hand whips out. The leader staggers. Roy slashes again. The leader goes down. The gang comes at Roy from both sides, using chairs, gun butts, fists. Roy fights hard, but no one man could take this many. Roy feels his knees begin to buckle. The gang senses that he's going down. They surge forward against this man who fights alone. Hey, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Who you got there? Come on now, come on, let us through, boys. Stand aside. They've got the man we want. Yes, I thought so. Well, you folks ain't taking in Rogers. <laughs> That's my job, and I aim to do it. Uh, Get away from there, yard bird. <laughs> so your name is Roy Rogers. Keep away from me. You'll not take me either. Rogers, you asked for this. Go on, bullet. Get him, boy. Get him. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. Don't show him no mercy now. Get away from me. Get away from me. Right, Get, right, away. Right. Get him. I'm through. I'm finished. Yeah, hold it, dog. Hold it, hold it. Now, all you hombre, stay away from this dog. Now, now guard him for a second, Bullet. What happens now, Jonah? Well, I ain't sure, but I'm going to try something. Sergeant, where's the sergeant with this detail? Uh, well, I guess he must have stayed outside on guard. Here, here, a couple of you fellas get a hold of Rogers and drag him out to the alley. That's right. 
Jones. That's right. Now tie him up out there in case any of his lawmen friends drop in here before we get through. Then we'll take him back where he belongs. Men, this fellow is dangerous. Yeah, that's right. That's a good fellow. Now you, you lift him up with the feet. You two other boys can carry his shoulders. I don't think we've had the pleasure of meeting him, eh? What's that? You mean to say you don't know who I am? You ain't never heard of Lieutenant Colonel Jonah H. Wild, U.S. Cavalry, retired? <laughs> now stop asking foolish questions, boy. This fellow Rogers is a danger and a peril. For all I know, a posse may be a following him. Now get him out in back, rope his hands and feet so as we can ride him out of here. <laughs> Up. All right, thank you kindly, boys. Now, if you'll help me carry him to our horses, I'll take him off your hands. No, you won't. What's that? Don't you know better than to argue with the lieutenant colonel? You ain't taking Rogers away until we know more about you. We don't want to be tricked. Maybe we'd better tell him who we really are. Yeah, maybe you have. Well, I'm... Uh, well, the young lady's my daughter. Her grandfather was a two-star general. How about you? Well, I'm... Uh, now, this is an insult to my reputation, but I'll tell you. You heard of the lieutenant colonel, ain't you, who disgraced his profession by forging his own discharge papers? Uh, I... Now, don't tell me you're so unwell read, you ain't. Well, uh, yes, I think I heard something about it. Well, I'm that lieutenant colonel. Now, I'm in the business of raising checks and bonds right now. I come down to meet a pair of mighty nice fellas named... Uh, and I won't tell you their names. I don't know you well enough. But they've got some hundred-dollar bonds that they'd like to have made worth a thousand. Uh, Norris and uh, Manson were to meet somebody here. Yeah, yeah, that's the fellas, that's the fellas. Do you know them, too? Uh, say, uh, help me get Rogers over at the horses before a posse rides in, will you? I got to be shocking him before I meet Norris and Manson. Give me a hand, boys. If he'll do away with Rogers, we're that much ahead. <laughs> Well, I certainly thank you, boys. Pleasure to have met you. I don't believe we got your name. Pete Nicholas. Good luck in getting rid of Rogers and on the other deal, too. Thank you. Oh, about the other deal, Dad. Yeah. Huh? Dad, I wonder if we shouldn't change our meeting place with Mr. Manson and Mr. Norris. You know, if Rogers does have someone following You're him... You're right. You've got a smart daughter there. Well, yes, well, blood will tell. You see, her grandfather was a buck pride... Uh, was a general. You can see that. I'll have Manson and Norris at my place. You meet them there at 8 tonight. It's that brown house in the next block. Fine, fine. We'll have plenty of time between now and 8 to take care of Rogers. I've sure got to hand it to you two. You talked us out of a mighty bad spot. Yes. Jonah, are you getting a cold? Yes. No. Well, what's the matter? Oh, nothing. Well, come on here. We've got a lot of business to take care of. Yeah, what'll we do about that appointment, Roy? We won't keep it, that's sure. We won't keep it? <laughs> Disgraced myself and Dale, too. We bluffed our way out of a bad spot, but they're on to us now. Once your friend Nicholas describes you to Manson and Norris, it's all over. Oh, I never thought of that. If we went to keep the appointment, we wouldn't live long enough to walk up the porch steps. Sixty-one years rode away. Well, it seems a shame to think those two rattlers will get away with robbing Bill Palmer, though. What makes you think they will get away with it? Nicholas and his gang will go over to his house and wait for us. Not many of them will stay around to guard Norris and Manson. Yeah, if we could just find out where they are. They're upstairs in the rooms over the cafe. I saw them going up, just as the fight with me started. Nicholas is probably up there with them right now telling them to stay put until he comes back with word that we're out of the way. Eight o'clock comes, and with it, darkness. Roy, Dale, and Jonah tie their horses in an alley then make their way around to the street and toward the cafe, keeping close to the building so they'll not be seen. Bullet follows. They stop in front of the cafe. Roy looks inside. It's pitch black. He takes a knife from his pocket inserts the blade in the door jam beside the lock. The door opens. You wait here, Bullet. Come on, Dale, Jonah. Hey. Here are the stairs now. Careful now. There's a light on up there. Yeah, I know. You hear something? Hold it. 
thought I heard something. It's too early for the boys to be back. We're in trouble. Maybe we better have a look. Draw your guns. We'll have to rush them. The door at the top of the stairs is thrown open. Roy, Teal, and Shona run forward, firing as they go. The men in the doorway fall back. Roy steps into the room, Dale and Jonah following. Their guns still smoking, but silent now. Hands up over your heads. Manson, you and Norris walk toward us. Roy feels the cold muzzle of a pistol at the back of his head. Pete Nicholas has stepped out from behind the door. Stand right still. That goes for the ex-lieutenant colonel and his daughter, too. Red, come on up. Take that gun. Oh, disgrace and more disgrace. Manson. You and Norris get out fast. We'll handle these three. Hey, their dog is downstairs. Out the window. It's only a ten-foot drop. Lefty, put a gun on Rogers. I'll finish off that dog first thing. Better come around here. Stay behind him. The two men come forward. Manson and Norris are jumping through the window. Roy senses defeat. The two men start past him, and Roy's foot goes out. He trips one of the men, then whirls about, springs for the lamp. He throws it across the room. The room is in blackness. Now Roy, Dale, and Jonah have a fighting chance. Out the window, Dale. You first, Jonah. Then Dale. Now follow. We've got those two rattlers on the run now. Friends, how about doing yourself a favor and trying wonderful new crinkles real soon? You know, for a breakfast treat, you can't beat rice. And candy kissed rice is twice as nice. That's crinkles. Post new rice cereal that's sugar-coated. You just add milk or cream and eat. New crinkles are already sweet. Crisp toasted rice in sugar and honey. Like we say in our little song, You will have a circus eagle crinkles. Sugar-coated cereal crinkles. Crinkles, 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 crinkles. Candy kissed rice, it's twice as nice. Yeah. Candy kissed rice, it's twice as nice. So you will have a circus eagle crinkles. And say, friends, crinkles are grand for snacks, too. Eat them by the handful, anytime, right out of the box. Just be sure you get crinkles in the red, white, and blue box with the crinkles clown right on the front. Once you try crinkles, you'll be saying, Yes, candy kiss price, it's twice as nice. Yeah. Candy kiss price, it's twice as nice. So you will have a circus eating crinkles. You all right, Dale and Jonah? Sure. Bullet! Come on, boy! Dale, you didn't see which way Manson and Norris went, did you? No, I didn't. Yeah, I'd sure like to get my hands on them two pool catch. Come on, Bullet! What's the matter with him? He's found something behind that wagon. Yeah, and it's something human. Take him, Bullet! That's it, Bullet! Hold it, Bullet! Hold it! Guard him, boy. Well, if it isn't our two friends. You ruined my whole career. All right, Manson, stand up. You too, Norris. Well, if it hadn't been for that dog, I... If it hadn't been for that dog, we might have had to shoot it out. You got the stocks and bonds with you? Uh, Norris is carrying them. Hand them over. How about Bill Palmer's money? Uh, I've got that. Most of it, anyhow. Let's have it. And then you can make a choice. Either go to jail here or wait for the American authorities to get you out. Or cross the border voluntarily. I'd advise you to cross voluntarily. You'll save everybody, including yourselves, a lot of trouble. Yes, Sheriff, it is too bad we couldn't have done something about Nicholas and his gang, too. But I think the local authorities will take care of them. I understand they're pretty rough on foreign gunmen who try to use that country as a refuge. Well, it should be. I'm surprised they let you back into the States, Jonah. Never mind Jonah, Sheriff. He saved our lives by some fast talk over there. Yeah, me and my big mouth. What are you sniffling for? You got a cold? No, I got the blues. The blues? What in the world about? Oh, Sheriff's Dale, I was the pride of my regiment. 61 years in the Army and a private all the way. <laughs> I tell you, it ain't everybody who can stay in that long and not get offered at least a corporal's stripes. Well, that's nothing. All the it... fellas used to look up to me, Roy, but now I just spoiled everything. 
I had to claim I was an officer, a lieutenant colonel at that. Why, uh, Jonah! Well, Dale, I apologize right now for the insult I give you. <laughs> idea making a two-star general out of a fine old feller like your grandpa. Well, I think he'll well, forgive you for that, Jonah. Maybe so, but it ain't no laughing matter. Well, what would my old buddies think of me? Why, even Feathery Fred. Well, who was Feathery Fred? Uh, I'm too sad to tell. Oh, come on. No. Well. This is something new. Yeah, all I can say now is that Feathery Fred furnished more quills to make General Rose pens than the whole quartermaster corps put together. <laughs> That's all! That's all! <laughs> now, be calm, Sheriff. Jonah was a hero today. We owe him a lot. No matter how it hurts, let's be calm. Ezekiel saw the wheel way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel way in the middle of the air. The big wheel moves by faith, and the little wheel moves by the grace of God. There's a wheel and a wheel way in the middle of the air. Some go to church for to sing and shout way in the middle of the air. Before six months, they're all turned out way in the middle of the air. Now let me tell you what a hypocrite will do way in the middle of the air. He'll talk about me and he'll talk about you. Way in the middle of the air, Ezekiel saw the wheel. Way up in the middle of the air, Ezekiel saw the wheel. Way in the middle of the air, the big wheel moves by faith, and the little wheel moves by the grace of God. There's a wheel and a wheel, way in the middle of the air. One of these mornings, about four o'clock, way in the middle of the air, this old world's gonna reel and rock. Way in the middle of the air. Now, if you get there before I do, way in the middle of the air, tell all my friends I'm coming to, way in the middle of the air, Ezekiel saw the wheel, way up in the middle of the air, Ezekiel saw the wheel, way in the middle of the air, the big wheel moves by faith, and the little wheel moves by the grace of God, there's a wheel and a wheel, way in the middle of the air. One of these mornings, bright and fair. Way in the middle of the air. I'll take my wings and cleave the air. Way in the middle of the air. Now, if you get there before I do. Way in the middle of the air. Tell all my friends I'm coming through. Way in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel. Way up in the middle of the air. Ezekiel saw the wheel. Way in the middle of the air. The big wheel moves by faith. And the little wheel moves by the grace of God. There's a wheel and a wheel. Way in the middle of the air. Look for Roy Rogers on NBC television Saturday, December 29th or Sunday, December 30th in other cities. See your local newspaper for time and station. Buckaroos, Dale and Jonah and I and all of us wish you the best new year you ever had. Well, that's all for now, folks. This is Roy Rogers saying to all of you from all of us, goodbye, good luck, and may the good Lord take a liking to you. See you next week. Happy trails to you until we meet again. Happy trails to you. Keep smiling until then. The Roy Rogers Show is brought to you by Post Serials each week at this same time with the Whippoorwills, Forrest Lewis, Dale Evans, and the king of the cowboys himself, Roy Rogers. An Art Brush production transcribed, directed by Tom Hargis, script by Ray Wilson, music by Milton Charles. Featured in today's cast were Frank Hemingway, Herb Butterfield, Ralph Moody, and Bill Green. This is Art Ballinger speaking for P.O.S.T. Post Serials. Happy trails to you Until we meet again Happy trails to you Keep smiling on who cares about the clouds if we're together? Just sing a song and bring the sunny weather. Happy trails.